Hello everyone and thank you for coming to this virtual information session for Midwestern State University. My name is Jonathan Henderson. I'm the Regional Admissions Counselor with Midwestern State University for the Dallas area. What that means for you is that I'm highly accessible. I live in uh, the Flower Mound Grapevine area and can visit your schools. I'm also available online um, and so you know, I work full time with students from the Dallas area. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you about college in general, admissions, um, really anything you need from me as a representative from Midwestern State, I'm happy to help you with. Uh, just a little bit about me. I'm an alumni of Midwestern State. I graduated with my bachelor's degree from there in 2016 and I'm working on my master's. Um, so I've been with MSU in a number of different positions as a student, as an instructor of English, and as a staff member. So I can answer questions from lots of different perspectives. So we're going to go through this presentation today with some general information about Midwestern State, but on each slide or well most of the slides you'll see a QR code like you do on this title slide here. If you're interested in learning more about what's being talked about on that page, you are absolutely welcome to go ahead and click on that or take a picture of that QR code with your phone and it should take you to a link that will uh, get you to what you need to go to to see more information in detail because we can only cover so much in the presentation but those links should take you to what you need to see in greater detail so a little bit about midwestern state to start midwestern state is a small to medium-sized public university in wichita falls texas so if you've not been to wichita falls before midwestern is about two hours northwest of the dfw area well maybe just a little over two hours from where you're at right now um, but it is a pretty easy and quick drive. We like to say that we're just close enough so you can come home and visit, but just far enough away that you can learn a little bit of independence. Wichita Falls is a town of about 120,000 people. It's kind of like taking one of the medium-sized towns here in DFW and transplanting it two hours west. It's got all the amenities of a town that size. It's a nice place to live, um, and I really enjoyed living there when I did. I'm kind of sad that I've moved down here and gotten away from Wichita. I would like to go back someday. Uh, but it's a really nice place to live. It's a really great place to study. And we'll talk a little bit about why. Oops, there we go. Uh, Midwestern State, uh, like I said, is small to medium size. We have around 6,000 students. So we're bigger than most small, or bigger than most of your private schools in Texas, smaller than a lot of your public schools. But with a 6,000 uh, student population, we can keep class sizes pretty small. We have a class, student to faculty ratio of about 18 to one. So that's 18 students to every one uh, or 18 students to every one professor. And I can tell you from experience, it's definitely like that at Midwestern. We have small class sizes. When I was teaching English at Midwestern, my biggest class that I was allowed to have was around 20 students. When I was a student at Midwestern in my junior and senior year, my smallest class had five in it. Um, so we like to focus a lot on individual attention for students. Um, it, you learn better that way. Uh, you have a lot more attention from your professors. You have a lot more experience with the other students in the class. In all, we just think you get a better experience in a smaller classroom environment, especially because we do a lot of Socratic teaching in which we involve students heavily in the discussion rather than just lecture at you. So you get a chance to be a lot more involved. We are also the only public liberal arts college in the state of Texas, and that word liberal there doesn't have anything to do with politics. It uh, simply means we're on sort of more of a private school model. We're a little freer in the choice for our students. They are allowed to pick uh, their own degree plan um, within the parameters of that degree. There's a lot of freedom of course selection that students have. You can choose any major and minor you like. We don't like to hold you down to one plan. We like to guide you towards the end of your degree and give you lots of freedom of choice. Midwestern State pretty much looks like this throughout. It's a nice open green space of about 255 acres. It's a beautiful campus. It's comfortable. I enjoyed living there and I enjoyed living around it when I lived off campus. Um, it's a great place to go. It's a comfortable university to go to and it's nice and quiet. It's a really good atmosphere to get your degree in. So we have over 100 different student organizations, 14 different fraternities and sororities, over 20 different recreational sports. We are NCAA Division II and part of the Lone Star Conference. The only sport that I really get asked about that we don't have is men's baseball. But if you go to that QR code there, you can find out more information on all the different student organizations, the sports and our frats. Uh, we have lots of opportunities for students on campus to find support and uh, for dining options. We have Burrito Bowl, Mavericks Corner, which is kind of like a university restaurant, Grill Nation, Chick-fil-A. We have a Einstein Bagels and a Starbucks. 
Uh, we have all the different student support centers that you would expect at a university. And we have a very, very large wellness center just across the road from us on Midwestern Parkway. Uh, it's got a ton of space for students to um, experience wellness. It's got a pool. There's a lake right beside it with a really good walking and running track. Uh, it's a very enjoyable place to go. We have lots of opportunity for students to do things outside of the classroom. And with those hundred different organizations, there's really always something for students to do as long as they're looking. If you haven't found something to do or a group to join, uh, I like to say that you're probably not looking hard enough, but opportunity is there for students to start their own organizations as well if they really just can't find something that they want to do. Okay, as far as housing goes, uh, like a lot of public universities, we do require students to live on campus for the first year if they're from an area that is outside of 60 miles from Wichita Falls, or from Midwestern State, which would be all of you. But we have a lot of really good housing options for students. We have four different dorms, two different apartment complexes, and then some off-campus housing. Most students will live on campus, however, almost all in fact. And we have really good dorms. Um, I lived at MSU for about a year, in fact, I lived in our oldest dorms, but they were very renovated and very comfortable. In fact, they were the most private. All of our dorms are fairly private, either having a privacy wall or shaped in such a way that students have their own private space or have their own private bedroom with a lockable door. Um, it just kind of depends on the halls that you choose. There are lots of different options and that QR code in the corner there will take you to our housing page, which will show you those options that might be available to you. Um, we have two apartment complexes on campus as well. They range anywhere from two to four bedrooms. Um, they're just like normal apartments. They're pretty new by comparison. Uh, one of them is outdoor entry, one is indoor entry. We also have what's called living learning programs on campus where you can live with students um, who are in the same programs as you. You have um, an advisor assigned to that group as well. So you can kind of live with and around students who are going through the, some of the same experiences that you might be going through as well. And like I said, we have a student population of around 6,000 and then about 1,680 students or so live on campus. We do have a pretty good sized commuter population just because the area around Wichita Falls is so large and uh, the nearest place is DFW really with other universities. So a lot of students from our area do come to school at Midwestern as well. But I think we get the bulk of our students outside of Wichita Falls from the DFW area. So you can uh, take a look here, and if you're watching this recorded, you can pause it and take a look at all of our different majors that we offer. Uh, also minors listed on here as well in our pre-professional programs. As a liberal arts college, we like to focus on a little bit of everything. Personally, I'm from the humanities side of things from before, uh, from when I was a student, but we have really great programs everywhere. We are especially known for our health sciences and our business program, specifically within health sciences, nursing and radiology, and then our entire business program. We also have respiratory care, which is something that's becoming a lot more important, as we all know, in the year 2020. Uh, but if you're looking for health sciences, we have a very updated health sciences facility. It was just built a year ago. It's barely been open, you know, in the, in the lifetime of buildings, that's considered pretty short. We have a state-of-the-art simulation center, really great equipment for our nursing students and our rad tech students to use uh, to get first-hand experience before they get into any kind of clinicals or working in their career fields as well. You can see that within some of these programs, there are also concentrations listed. So we do have a lot of opportunity for students to really explore their degrees. Some of these don't have their concentrations listed, but there are some concentrations within each one. Just for example, our humanities program listed on the bottom left here, there are 11 different concentrations within the humanities. Um, there are options for students to do just about anything at Midwestern. You just have to find the program that you like the best. We also offer pre-professional programs, um, programs in pre-medicine, pre-dentistry, pharmacy, physical therapy, law, and vet school. For those of you who are interested in becoming one of those things, know that you have to have a bachelor's degree first before you go to graduate school to study those, but we can help you prepare for those schools. Oops, automatic light went off, sorry. <laughs> we can help you prepare for those schools uh, by getting you uh, the education you need while you're doing your bachelor's degree in one of those pre-professional programs. Um, you can actually major in really just about anything that you want while doing one of those programs, but we do recommend you stick to something that is similarly related. So if you're going to do medicine, you might think about doing a biology major. If you're going to do law, you want to do something in our humanities programs, something that's writing intensive. Um, but you are welcome to really major in whatever you want. If you want to be a theater major and do pre-med, more power to you. It's going to take you a little longer to graduate, but um, you know, you're welcome to do that if you so choose. 
you can also pair any minor you want with any major we have. Um, you are not limited by that kind of choice at all. We also have a lot of different special programs for students. We have our Red Wine Honors Program, which pays between four and $7,000 a year in addition to any other scholarships you might have received from us. Uh, there are some extra requirements involved in that, but it's a really great program. I can tell you from firsthand experience as a graduate of our Honors Program, it's a lot of fun. There's extra work involved like honors classes, research programs, or study abroad if you choose. But at the end, it is well worth it. You graduate with an honors degree, you get a lot of extra money throughout your college career, and it's a really good community of students. We have study abroad programs that go to a lot of different countries. We go from the Caribbean to Central America to France to Spain, London, and we've just added a program in Prague in the Czech Republic as well. Of course, a lot of that is on hold due to COVID, but by the time you're a junior or senior and you're getting ready to do one of those study abroad programs, hopefully this plague is over. Um, so we can get you guys out and do some study abroad. We have an Air Force ROTC program that is a partnership with UNT. Um, we have student support services and a really robust undergraduate research program where students can get funded to do research and work with their professors on campus. Um, I did this twice while I was at Midwestern. I made money to do research and essentially just add a little bit of extra work onto my classes. It was a lot of fun. Um, I worked on a book project uh, twice with two different professors. And it was a really good deal. It was a lot of fun. I got a lot out of it. And it looks very, very good on a resume for graduate school or in the professional world if you do that kind of thing. So there's lots of opportunity for students to further their education at Midwestern beyond the normal bachelor's degree that you might go for. And we also have master's degrees as well if you choose to stay with us when you finish. As far as admittance goes, COVID has changed admittance for us just like it has for most other schools. We still have our typical um, admissions process and now we have a test optional pathway as well. So if you look at the left side of this screen at the top, you can see our traditional SAT ACT admissions process um, for both the test optional and the traditional process of admittance. We do automatic admission if you have between a 3.0 and a 4.0 GPA or you're in the top 25%. If you have your test scores, we will base your admission on your test scores and your class rank after that, if you don't meet one of those requirements. And you can see on the left side here, um, look where my mouse is, there are the test scores that are required based on the class rank that you have. Now, if you haven't been able to take your SAT or ACT, that's all right. We understand not everyone can in 2020, so we have a test optional pathway. You can see that pathway here that is based on GPA, unweighted and converted to a 4.0 and automatic admission again 3.0 to 4.0 unconditional admission 2.75 to 2.99 and then 2.5 to 2.74 is conditional admission which might require some developmental courses we also have what's called the vernon college to msu bridge program this is where students who have between a 2.0 and a 2.5 who might not otherwise be eligible for college admission to a university can come to us and live at midwestern take one class at midwestern three classes at Vernon College, which is the junior college next door to us. And you're still considered an MSU student. You're getting scholarships from us. You're living at MSU. You're just taking more of your classes at Vernon College for the first year. Once that program is complete and you've successfully passed for the 2.0 GPA, you become a full-time MSU student just like anyone else. It's a brand new program. We do, we're doing it for the first time this semester. And so far it's working out great. Um, so if there's anything, um, uh, you guys have questions about whether or not you'll be admitted, you can really see here exactly what you need. We like to make it pretty cut and dry for students. Of course, after you apply on applytexas.org with us, there are other requirements that you have to do to get admitted, just like with any other school. We're going to need your transcripts. We're going to want your test scores if you have those test scores. We're going to have to get your application fee. It's a $40 fee for us. That can be paid at Apply Texas or on our website if you don't pay for it. But we do have fee waivers available. If you're on free or reduced lunch or you've received an SAT or an ACT fee waiver, your counselor can help you with a form and send it directly to me and we can get your fee waived. Also, if you're eligible for the Pell Grant and you have proof of that, you can send it to me and we can work on a fee waiver as well. The easiest thing to do is actually just to send us your FAFSA though and then I can look that up in our system. Um, we need your high school transcripts, of course. We need those official transcripts. So they need to be either be in a sealed envelope from you, uh, hand carried or mailed to us or mailed by your school or sent to us through some electronic means by your school in which the transcript is official. Your counselors will know how to help you with that kind of thing. Um, we also need any college transcripts. If you've taken 
dual credit or anything that would award college uh, credit know that though those classes might be listed on your high school transcript, they're not really the certifying body. So we will need the transcripts from the college the dual credit is actually from. So you might need to send that to us as well if you have dual credit and you'll want to reach out to the college directly that you took dual credit through. Okay, so let's talk about cost. We tend to be around 18 to 20,000 um, on average. There's a little bit of wiggle room there, kind of depending on how many classes you take. The quote you're seeing up here in the top left corner for tuition and fees is based on 15 credit hours. That's one class more than full time. Uh, our room and board also averages kind of middle of the road dorm, middle of the road meal plan at about 8,804. So together you can see, you know, 18 to 20 is about what we will cost on average for students. There'll be a little wiggle room if you're like a science major versus an arts major or a humanities major. Sometimes there's more cost involved with science classes because of lab hours and stuff, but we're talking variables of a couple hundred dollars, probably not a couple thousand dollars. The biggest change you'll see is if you go from dorms to apartments or you pick a more expensive meal plan, or if let's say you're taking 15 hours and you go down to 12 or you go up to 18 hours, um, that will be where you'll see the biggest kind of fluctuation. But as far as tuition goes, we do not raise the tuition on you. Um, as long as you're passing your classes and doing well, you are locked into the same tuition you're paying at the beginning as you would be uh, paying at the end. So if we, let's say, raise tuition 15%, which is a crazy number uh, for 2022, and you start in 2021, you're gonna be paying 2021 tuition until you graduate um, because we like students to know what they're paying when they come to us. We have lots of financial aid options to cover a lot of that cost. And we're already one of the most affordable schools in North Texas. And with our financial aid, we become even more affordable. 75% of our students do receive some sort of financial aid. The average is around 10,400, which cuts that price probably in more than half for most students. So there's lots of financial aid available. We have that honors program like I talked about, our SAT or ACT scores can give you uh, merit-based scholarships. I think those next slide will show you some of those. We have that honors program. Um, we have valedictorian and salutatorian scholarships. We have the Pretty Scholars Program, that's P-R-I-D-D-Y. That covers everything, and it's for first-generation college students. So um, take a look at that program. You can find more information on that QR code below on some of our scholarships. But our biggest scholarship that we have is something we started when we partnered with Dallas County Promise. Um, on the bottom right, it's the Mustangs Guarantee. Now I do need to update one thing on this slide. So I wanna point out this first. That number that says $50,000, where my mouse is, that should be $65,000. So we have increased the amount of people who can use this program. If you are a Texas resident, if you're eligible for the Pell Grant, if it's your first time coming to MSU and your family makes less than $65,000 a year, then tuition and fees are free at Midwestern State. That will completely eliminate this tuition and fees portion right here. And that's what's called a last dollar scholarship. This means that we will apply any grants or scholarships we've given you to your tuition and fees. And then whatever is left, Midwestern State will cover the rest if you meet the requirements for that program. So it's a really good program for lots of students who might be wondering how they're gonna afford college otherwise. And because our room and board is pretty affordable, and if you were to live off campus, Wichita Falls is one of the most affordable places to live in the state of Texas, it's a really good deal because you're really only paying for housing at that point. Just to point out how cheap it is actually to live in Wichita Falls, I moved to Grapevine, Texas in the last year and a half from Wichita Falls, I am paying twice in DFW what I was paying for a very similar apartment in uh, Grapevine. So I'm paying about 700 in Wichita with a student discount for an apartment just across the street from campus. Whereas here I'm paying, you know, 1400 for a similar, actually older apartment. So it's a really good opportunity for students to get out of the DFW area if they want to and to live affordably while getting an affordable education. This is the cost or this is the amount of some of those uh, merit scholarships I was talking about. If you're watching this recorded, you can pause this here and you can see exactly how much we're gonna offer you every year based on your test scores. If you were to take your SAT or ACT, as long as you keep passing your classes and you're doing well, you will get this every year for four years. These are a little smaller. I like to call them kind of welcome to MSU scholarships. 
uh, but you get to keep them the entire time. We have the President's Distinguished Scholarship as well, which will recognize 10 students. And then there's the list um, of costs for that honors program also. Uh, you wanna check out our donor services page listed below here on the bottom right for a list of complete scholarships. Um, and then if you wanna to apply to some of these big scholarships, they do have different deadlines than general admission. So you're gonna to wanna to check out those pages and see what those deadlines are. Um, last but not least, you should come visit Midwestern State. Um, most students, once they come to visit us, know right away whether or not they want to be here. It's a comfortable, beautiful campus. Um, people are so nice. It's a great place to go. I have lots of students who tell me that coming to visit was the deciding factor for them. They're not sure about it because it's a place they've never been. It's a smaller town. But once they get here, they kind of fall in love with it. I did. Um, and if you go to that QR code there, you can decide to check us out before you come up to visit. We have a virtual reality tour or just a general virtual tour. You can check it out from our Welcome Center page or that QR code will link you to. But we do do in-person tours every single day at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. You'll be taken around by a tour guide to check out campus. Um, we do some of them on Saturdays as well. And those are at 11. Just check out that page that QR code takes you to and it'll show you how to schedule some of those. Mustangs Rally is our big open house. Normally that's a big on-campus opportunity. This year it was virtual. We're gonna have, probably have another one in March as well. It'll probably also be virtual, but it just kind of depends on the state of COVID in the country. Um, and then, you know, like I said, check us out. Uh, it's a really cool campus. It's a beautiful place to go. There's neat stuff to do in Wichita Falls, especially if you're an outdoorsy person, um, but it's a great place. I loved it. Um, I kind of wish I was back there all the time and I very much miss it. Um, but overall, Midwestern State is a really great university and we want to see you at Midwestern. Of course, it's not going to be a fit for every single person, but give us a try. You never know if we're going to fit you. And thank you. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to come out and present to you today. If you need to get a hold of me at all, that QR code at the end here, that will take you to our Meet Your Counselor page where you can find my information. My email and my phone number are both on there. You are welcome to reach out to me at any time with any questions whatsoever. Thank you.